Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? Let me know if you guys can hear me and also if you can see the shared screen. I'm sharing uh, the open house slide. Okay, good morning, everyone. All right, happy Wednesday, happy hump day, everyone. Perfect, thank you so much. Hey, Brian, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Wow, we have a packed room today. We actually have more people in today than we had yesterday morning. So, all right, so good morning, everyone. Pre-market planning is one of the most important steps for trading. Uh, never come unprepared. So you have to do your homework before each trading session, regardless of what you're trading, whether you're trading stocks, futures, forex, whether you're doing options or whatever you're doing, uh, you have to take a look uh, at the market and uh, determine your relative strength, determine your relative weakness, uh, within the indices. And from that point on, you get to uh, go ahead with your selection criteria for your stocks or whatever you may be trading. So good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this, is the, this is day two of the open house. Uh, we start at nine o'clock every morning. We do a lot of homework. In fact, uh, in a regular trading environment, I usually come on the mic a little later because I'm collecting more data. I also swing trade stocks and uh, I do do a lot of homework before 9.30. So I come on the mic a little bit later. All right, so um, for those of you that are new today, I see a lot of new people in here that are very new. i never seen before. I just wanna say hi and welcome. My name is Don Comet Calf, and I am the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, uh, the futures and the uh, equities market. But it's not only about the futures and the equities market. Once you know how to trade, you could trade anything on the planet, cryptocurrencies, options, anything. And I have been doing this professionally for the last 18 years. So what does that mean? I quit my job and I started day trading. I have been swing trading and investing my whole life. However, day trading was very new to me and I needed an income producing style of trading. And this is what uh, day trading is all about. I also come with 10 years in investment banking, uh, and I also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs since 2010. So yes, we have been around for 11 years. I also run a futures trading room, uh, which is actually this one right here since 2017, where we have over 300 members. Um, we have, uh, <clears throat> and I have managed day trading and swing trading accounts for my clients. Uh, and like I said, we do offer trading education uh, for swing trading and day trading for stocks and futures. Um, I specialize in high velocity moves and high accuracy trades. So that means that I wait for the best trading opportunity before I dive into the market. I don't risk my money on any kind of nonsense pattern. So I wait for something really good to be setting up. I'm the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system. What that means is that I am not the creator. I can't be. Technical analysis has been around for many, many years, but I have tweaked and redesigned the system to work for a retail account. And uh, my system is based on price port resistance, but there's a catch. The basic supply and demand, the basic support resistance represents only, let's say, maximum of 20% of the equation. The rest comes from confluence area. So there are multiple levels of price support resistance. Um, I also uh, have developed trigger times. You will hear me throughout this trading session that I do mention 9.35, 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11.15, and that's pretty much it for the trading morning. These are specific trigger times where we have a higher probability of the trades following through for our targets. Uh, we also have specific price zones. You will notice that I do mention some zones um, that are more prone yesterday. If you really listen to the video, I'm slipping a tons of information uh, for you to learn from. Uh, so re-listen to that. I talk about some of these specific price zones and also chart synchronicity, which is very important. 
Yesterday was the perfect example because we had NASDAQ with relative weakness and we started the day with relative strength in NASDAQ and it weakened throughout the day becoming the relative weak index compared to the Dow and, e, uh, and ES that were uh, really bullish and had relative strength compared to even Russell or the NASDAQ, obviously. All right, so uh, risk disclaimer, all information provided today by myself and my company is for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. Pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a really high level of risk. It may not be suitable for all investors because you could lose money if you don't know what you're doing in the market. So before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and your risk appetite. If you guys want to get a hold of us uh, on our website to learn more about what we do and what we offer, you can hop on to tradeoutloud.com. Uh, and if you have any questions about any of our programs, you can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com. Some rules. No questions in the first hour. We focused on trading. We will allocate time at the end of the trading session for ample Q&A, just like we did yesterday. Small accounts can participate in any trade setups using micros. Um, if, for example, you're here for the very first time, watch the dynamics. Position sizing is key. We recommend traders to use one or 2% of their account size risk per trade. This is very, very, very important. This is more important than anything else. I do the work for you. This is the only work that you need to do, position sizing. Um, what I do, I typically exit half of my position at target one. I scale out another quarter at target two and the rest I trail. I trade multiple contracts. If you, for one reason or another, do not trade uh, with multiple contracts, uh, and if you want to trade, for example, with one full contract, or if you, uh, uh, for example, trade with one micro, um, please, you will not have the option to take partial exits. So please be very attentive on the trail out areas because once I enter the position, once I'm on my route to target one. I am uh, always on the lookout for a spot where to lift my stop, to raise my stop. So I'm in the money. So I don't have to, and in case the price turns around, uh, I am not going to lose anything in that trade. So for example, when I call a trade, you'll hear me on the mic saying S&P long 4431 by 4420, for example. Uh, and these are the targets. And I uh, usually post one or two targets or one target and the rest to be decided because if you're having a very fast paced market environment, I'm more focused on entering the trade. So the first uh, thing that I post is the symbol, whether it's yes or NASDAQ or Russell or corn or soybeans or whatever it may be. The direction, long or short, L for long, S for short. The first number is the entry price. Then I have times, right? The X means buy. The stop, the number, the second number is the stop price. And then you have the TGT, which uh, represents the target. All the trades will be called on the mic several times. It is impossible for you to miss the trades, really impossible to miss the trades. If the market is fast, the trades will be on the mic only. If we have ample uh, time to post the trade, which happens 99.9% .9 of the time, I will mention it on the mic and I will also type it into the trading room. Also, what I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody uh, is aware is that I use limit orders. I do not get in at market, not unless I specify it, because our trades are called in advance. And because they're called in advance, we have time to put in the limit order to get the desired price. 
please be on time. And if you're late, we will not answer any questions to the already answered matters. So what to expect today, just like yesterday, we will go over the pre-market game plan. We will be analyzing the current market environment. We will go over the news and analyze the impact on price action. And we did have some news this morning. We're going to talk about that. Major earnings reports from prior day close and current day open, identifying trading opportunities, identifying hot patterns, waiting for a trade, which is the most interesting thing because trading is mostly about waiting for a trade and not executing, not pushing buttons. In fact, it is 95% waiting on only 5% execution. We will determine the execution strategy and parameters, and we will constantly talk on the mic about the technical parameters. Uh, then we will do the live trading just like we did yesterday. And at the end of the day, we will recap the session. And of course, we will do some um, PM planning. And uh, yesterday we had NASDAQ, right? We talked about NASDAQ extensively of a possibility of that 30 minute rotation, 30 minute buy uh, with that huge bottoming tail that we had. And I said, the target is 80. Guess where it went to 84. Okay, so we are that precise into targets and determining um, everything into the market. We focused on any style of trading, uh, scalping, continuation patterns, trend trading, counter trend trading, day and swing. So it doesn't matter if the market is moving higher or lower. Uh, we're going to we don't have a preferred style. We go long or short. But of course, we need to take into consideration uh, the uh, bias for the trading session. Bias is very important. Today is Wednesday and we did have Fubo, that reporter earnings last night. Fubo is higher on the trading session today. And this morning before the open, we had Wendy's and Wix and all these other stuff that reported earnings. Not a lot of influence, uh, not a lot of influence into the NASDAQ or the S&P. After the close today, we have NEO that will be reported earnings. Clover Health eBay, this is going to be interesting for a Thursday session because eBay is quite a substantial stock within uh, NASDAQ. Uh, we have Bumble that is reported earnings, and this is pretty much it for tomorrow after the close. And as you can see, the, uh, the earnings season is winding down. So we're getting into the last six weeks of um, the quarter. So what that means is that we need to focus on unique things. We usually press the pedal to the metal within the first six weeks. And then in the last six weeks, we actually look for unique trading opportunities because the market becomes a little more, bit more chaotic, slower. In fact, you could see that the volume is a little bit lower uh, than we typically have it. And that is because we are winding down earnings season, summer months, usually August is a little bit thinner. And uh, with August, we begin a high volatility season. So August, September, and October are extremely difficult months. So if you are trading on your own, please be very, very careful because this is time where you are likely to blow up the accounts. All right, so yesterday we had the Senate, the Senate vote at 11 o'clock. Uh, we had uh, quite some price action movement and a lot of indecision into the market. And we started to have some pop-ups into the market that are very interesting, that were very interesting to say the least, in the overnight trading session. And uh, we had a nice London session bounce that uh, actually started uh, early this morning uh, at about 5 a.m. In terms of economic releases, we had, and the reason why the market is where it is right now is because we had the CPI and the core CPI that were released at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Other than that, for the trading session today, we have crude oil inventories at 10.30. As a general rule, I do not trade crude oil ahead of inventory numbers, and I will look at it at least 15 minutes before after, uh, after the numbers are out. Uh, and uh, also futures news, uh, micro treasury yield contracts are set for this Sunday night, August 15th. They start trading on August 16th, and uh, that's very exciting. We will have another micro into our micro suite. Uh, today, we will also be awarding two uh, prices to two traders that will uh, that we will be announcing uh, later 
uh, today in, towards the end of the trading session. So we already have two winners. We have already sent them out um, the instructions for the trading room. They will start immediately starting with Friday uh, to have access to the trading room. And they also have received a bonus, a huge bonus, which is valued at $1,000. And that is the risk management on-demand video course that will teach you how to position size. It's not gonna teach you how to position size just the futures market, but in general is a guideline of how to position size into this market. All right, so let's begin our analysis for the trading session today. Uh, first of all, we're gonna begin with an overlook, general look at the market. And uh, we're noticing here that the Dow 0.35% up, 0.28 for S&P, 0.38 for NASDAQ, and we have 0.28 for Russell, which gives us a really nice blend of strength and balance, right? Because they're not divergent. So we have a really nice blend of strength into the market. Uh, so the indices are trading at the same pace. Uh, we do have some levels for today. Notice that we don't have any bullish above levels or bearish below levels into the Dow. We do have an all-time high that was triggered after eight o'clock, uh, after actually 8.30 when the news came out. Uh, the price is moving higher, and we will talk a little bit more about it when we are going to do the in-depth analysis. The S&P uh, also trading above uh, trading above the old time high and uh, last week's uh, last week's high, which was into the 3825. This is a nice breakout for the upside. Do we have room for the upside? Yes, we do, and we're going to talk about that into our in-depth analysis. Uh, we do have, and uh, by the way, we did have a, um, a bullish above level that has triggered at five o'clock this morning into the mini SMP, actually. Uh, in NASDAQ, we do have a level of resistance, tight, tight, tight resistance right here into the 92. I know, Don, you had a trade, which was a really nice bounce. We have a really massive support level right here into, uh, into NASDAQ that we have discussed yesterday. We actually have uh, had yesterday a bearish below level, uh, below 15,000. If you review the video from yesterday, it would be very interesting to analyze the market and see what I was discussing yesterday, that this becomes the bounce zone and we can have a jerk reaction to the upside. And this is exactly what, a jerk reaction to the downside and then a snap back uh, to the upside. And this is exactly what happened. Um, and these are just technicals. And we are reaching here a decision uh, decision. So we need to grind into this 100 in order to release more buying pressure. I will tell you more details about what, the stall and what happened here and why we're stalling into this 100 level momentarily. Russell has a bullish above level and in fact is setting up for a swing. I did type it in the room this morning that is setting up for a swing. Uh, and in fact, I would like to type it in right now because I would like to take the trade. So Russell Long, this is going to be a swing. So the trade duration can be a couple of days to a few days. So that means that you will carry the trade in the overnight trading session. The entry is going to be 22.44. The stop is going to be 20 under, under, careful, uh, it's under 22.23. And that means what I mean by under is like, don't put it at 22, 23, just give it a few ticks or give it a point uh, below that. And we do have uh, the first targets um, into the 2250 area and above 2250 uh, remains to be decided. We will talk about it today um, in the trading room uh, later on, but I just wanted to put it out there. So Russell, this is the first trade and it is going to be a swing. I'm gonna put an alert here. I'm gonna take it in a second on my platform, but I just wanna put an alert here as well uh, into the 2244 for those of you that are coming in the room a little bit later today. Okay, so that is the trigger. Limit order, okay, so. <clears throat> okay, uh, the other thing that we are going to discuss today is the setup in gold. Um, often, a lot of times, you know, we talk about this inside, um, this inside price action and we have it right here. So, uh, this was a bullish above level and we are going to, uh, we are going to, um, I mean, this was a textbook. If you look at it in the overnight trading session and it did happen, 
I think it happened at six o'clock this morning. Obviously, I was still sleeping at six, six o'clock in the morning. But we looked, uh, uh, th this was a bullish above uh, the 17, uh, 1740. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, 1740 was the uh, entry. The stop was 1718. <clears throat> this was the, this is the first target into the 50. Let's see if it hit 50. Uh, high 49. No, not yet. 50 was the target. So it, it close, it ran super close. It ran super, super close to, uh, to the target into the 50. And this is our resistant. This is going to be the line of the sand. If the price is not going to get above this, then it's going to turn around and, you know, come back in. But definitely, uh, you know, if you are a TOL student, you would have acted on this. Obviously, if you would have been awake at that time, we do have a lot of members that are trading from Europe, that are trading from Asia, from Australia, and they like to focus on these patterns. So um, we would like to uh, put the stop and break even. So if you're in this trade, if you took this trade, then you are your, your stop is at break even. All right, so uh, right now, um, yeah, 22, yeah, so here it is. Thanks for catching that. 22, 23, here it is. Okay, uh, by the way, it's really hard to trade, type, entertain, <laughs> and analyze all at the same time. <laughs> okay, so gold is garbage. Nothing to see here, nothing to do here. So uh, we're gonna look, uh, we're gonna look to see uh, after the numbers are out. This is, uh, this is not something that we wanna trade right now. Okay, one other thing that I wanted to bring up and this is for all my members, uh, this is corn. Okay, so we have a trade in corn at 556. It's trading right now uh, at 560, 560, uh, 568 actually is uh, resistance right here. Uh, we had another poke into this uh, 600 uh, last week on Friday into the 560. We need to erase this 560. We have a first target at, uh, we have a, yeah, we have actually a first target at 568, <clears throat> which is about, uh, eight points higher from here. Okay. So we're finally closing in on the possibility of that, of that rotation. Uh, daily chart looks very good. We want to see extended higher. Uh, this is pr a pretty decent move uh, today. We had it before, like I said, we had it on Friday into the same area. We got very excited and then it pulled back. But now it's back over our entry. Our entry is 556.25. And we have a first target into the 568 and 570. If you're asking right now, can I still get in? The answer is absolutely categorical. No, no, because your entry needs to be at the exact entry parameter. So the, if you're getting in now, your risk level is going to be so elevated. All right. So uh, let's begin with the in-depth analysis. And let's see what we have for the training session today. Let me put this on the 1H chart here. All right, and let's move. All right, so we have about five minutes. Uh, just let me know if you guys can see this. By the way, my platform has already triggered uh, the RTY long. All right, so I love swing trading because you don't have to like babysit it like, and you ha don't have to like, you know, super watch it like a hawk, okay? All right, so um, let's begin. Let, give me a heads up if you guys can see the screen. I am sharing a chart, big chart of the Dow right now, and we're going to start the in-depth analysis. Like I said, we have less than four minutes into the open, and I want to wrap it up by 9.30. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Okay, we have runaway price following the announcement, following actually the news release that came out at 8.30, and the price has been moving higher since then. So for the last hour, the price continues to grind higher. So what do we do in this case? Absolutely nothing. We wait for the price to pull back. We wait for the open. And if the price is going to pull back, for example, into the 35, 35, 200 to 210, we will look for an entry then. 
or for another setup that may develop uh, right after the open. As of this point, we have runaway price. Just want to put here uh, some extensions on so you guys can see where we're heading. Uh, let's do the closest extensions first. Okay. Because we did talk about this. So we, like I said, you have to have the homework already done. Okay. Let's see. All right. So these are the targets that we're going to be looking for. All right, let me just zoom in on the daily here. Okay, these are the targets that we're looking for. Uh, first of all, we're looking for around 500. So that is the, going to be the first target level. So what that means, and we talked about this last week because we have been consolidating here for weeks, for months in the Dow. And we knew that when we are going to break out, and this is what I'm talking about because July, this is a July high. This is uh, this is a June high. So we have been consolidating into this area for a very long time. And now that we snapped up, we have the uh, first resistance level into the 580 area. I like to go a little bit lower into the 500 because those areas are, uh, um, traders aren't gonna be quick to take profit, especially into these extensions. But we are extending higher. So we're looking for a continuation higher, which is, uh, which is uh, exactly what we have discussed. And uh, from the technical standpoint, like I said, we're either going to wait for a pullback into the 250 or the 200. The m and S&P is into the same type of uh, trading scenario. Uh, the S&P, I'm not going to post them right here. Um, if we have time later, I'm going to uh, show you the extensions. But the next uh, target level in S&P is 45.70. So a long way, not even like literally a long, long way from the target. So we do have another target right here into the 4450. Uh, obviously we have runaway price. You see that we have a bullish above level uh, for those of you that trade pre-market and have taken the course. Yes, you can enter it here. So you don't have to wait for me to come on the mic to trade, you learn how to trade and you execute. So this was your entry if, you, um, if you're if you one of my students. Uh, and of course, if you're only trading the New York trading session, you just have to wait for a pullback because this is going vertical right here. You can see that we had a vertical move on the one hour continuation with this move. We still have 30 minutes left into the scandal and we have about one minute away from the open. So definitely we need to see a pullback uh, the pullback is either going to be, and even this one, this pullback, even if we pull back into the 37, is still going to be extended. So uh, we're going to have to pay very close attention at the open. No jumping in trades, no chasing, no jumping in trades. I do none of that. Okay. Uh, the um, NASDAQ. Okay. Let's do NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ also has a lot of room to run uh, to the upside. It actually has an extension uh, close to 1600. Let me just take a quick peek at it again because I want to see the other extension. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, 16,923. That's going to be the next extension on it. Uh, NASDAQ is uh, trading in the that core of the massive range that we have from the daily, from the weekly, um, from the hourly, because you can see it here very well. You can see this really big range. We have support here, we have resistance on top, and then here's the open. And the price is trading right here into the core. So we really need to, uh, we really need to see how the price is going to digest this uh, area. And I was telling you guys earlier that I'm going to show you why the price is stalling into that area. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I want to, okay, let me, let me start with the beginning here. The 30 minute chart. Okay. The 30 minute chart has the 200 SMA high impact from the 200 SMA topping tail, topping tail, topping tail. See this candle right here. If the price is going to start trading below 80 and if it's going to print an 80, it's going to start pulling back a little bit but it's going to be like a jerk reaction down. And then it's probably going to rip back up because the momentum is definitely ripping for higher. So it's going to take some stops out, clear the stops before moving higher. And if the price is going to start trading above 110, it's going to start continuing higher. Although it doesn't have like a smooth transition to the upside because of the junky price action that we had to the left hand side. So it's going to grind a little bit. 
So right now we have the one minute high low, we have the two minute high low, we're closing in on the two minute high low. And I just wanna show you very, very quickly that we're trying to stabilize into this little two minute location into the 80s, because I've mentioned the 80s, 80s is gonna be the line in the sand. If we hold the 80s, the 80s will represent the low for today's trading session and we're gonna rip higher. However, if 80s are not going to hold, we're gonna see further pullback. Last but not least, we're going to do RTY. All right, so RTY is a swing trade. It is based on the daily chart. So um, most, of the, uh, most of the swings are based on the daily chart. So you can see here that we have support level. We have a confluence level as well. And we have low, higher, low, higher, low. So we have already three higher lows that have been already set. And we're trying to form the third, the actually the third higher low from the low right here. Because we have the first one, we have the second one. And this would be like the third one. So when we trade above this 44, we actually poked a little bit above it um, in the trade. We will look for a continuation, like I said, a little bit higher here um, into this 50 SMA and into this resistance area. So we're going to have a first target into 50. And then above 50, we're going to be looking for 55, 55 to 57 or so. Uh, if we start trading above and erase this whole entire range above 63.8 to 64, then we will have more, uh, um, I would say, pressure to the upside. I want to zoom it in and I want to show you what's really happening in RTY. Every single time, 2100 is the line in the sand. Uh, 2100 is still holding. And every single time when we uh, came into the 2100, we had the pop-up. 2100 pop-up, 2100 pop-up. So every single time we came in here, we came for a big pop-up. Now, Russell seems to be always a little bit more um, gyrating. Uh, when it opens before it finds before it finds the balance and this was the case in yesterday's trading session so it's a little bit moody if you have not traded Russell before you have to get used to it because it is trading a little bit more on the volatile side all right so this is Russell and I think we're pretty much set for the trading session right now to start so I'm going to be sharing my other screen all right and we're going to dive in smaller time frames for starters. I'm going to put it on a five minute to have a little bit of an inside, not too small and not too big of a time frame. And we're going to look and see uh, if we can find Moody. That's right, Lori. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wowzers. Paul, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay, so cool. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of a divergency in uh, the price action right now. So we're going to try to see uh, how we stabilize. Oops, and we are getting closer and closer to this 23 here. So let's see if this is going to hold. This is going to be the line that's down. We may be adding to the RTY long. Okay, uh, NASDAQ very strong. So we're going to focus on that as well. Let's see if R2Y is going to start getting above 22.30 and if it's going to hold this area. Right now, it topped into the one hour 200 SMA. It usually taps, you know, kind of goes back and forth. This is a huge confluence area right here at 22.25 in RTY, huge confluence area. We have the uh, 10 EMA. Uh, on the one uh, on the daily chart, we have the 200 SMA on the one hour chart. Okay. So uh, I'm seeing a little bit more price action in NASDAQ. So we're going to take a quick look at NASDAQ and see how it is trading out. We're having the pullbacks, just like we said. It's all When you have a runaway price, it's always a great idea to wait a little bit. All right. It's 9.35, right now. All 
Yeah, I'm keeping the hard stop in RTY, keeping the hard stop in RTY. Just two ticks, uh, just uh, half a point, half a point below the 2223. Half a point below 2223. Okay, I just moved it right now. Let's, I don't want to get dinged out because I want to add it just a little bit. Let's see if this 2222.3 is holding and then we may add to it. Okay, just give it just a little bit more room here. Just a little bit more room. We're forming a doji on the two minute. Forming a doji on the two minute. Just wait for it, wait for it. We may add to it to reduce our price. coming into our area give it a little bit of room now hold on i'll give you the exact number in a second hard hard stop 22 20 hard hard stop 22 20 we had a flex three points here. 2220 har har stop. And we're going to be adding 26.5. 26.5 add to RTY. Twenty six point five. Add to RTY. Har har. Stop. Two two zero. Two 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 zero. The ad lot. The first target for the ad lot is going to be twenty two thirty. Okay, let's check it out. YM is uh, going, going, going. All right, we are triggered in RTY for the ad. All right, let's see if we start with the momentum five minutes setting up right here, doji as well. If we get the price over 28.3, we're gonna head higher in RTY. Our average right now is 2235.25. Hard, hard stop, 220. 2220. Hard, hard stop. Below this bottoming tail. Below this bottoming tail. Right here, below the bottoming tail. 
So we're going to talk later about what I'm doing right now in the market. This is part of damage control. We need to see a print right now over 27.5, and then we need to see a print 28.5. 28.5 is going to launch us to 30. Here we go. Remember, we need it to see, we need to see it into 3525 to break even. So our second lot is helping. A second lot, guys, is just like you're taking another trade, whether it's an ad or a different trade. How many of you took it as a second trade? As a day trade? Because this qualifies as a day trade. Okay, Sean. Okay. Yeah. Because it's the pattern, right? It's the pattern. And by the way, SP is setting up here. Ugh. And we're having again a divergent market. Lori, not shocked. <laughs> Uncle Russell, we call him Uncle Russell in here because Uncle Russell is very moody, very moody. Okay, so we got to 30. You can see that I'm not scaling out anything, right? I'm not scaling out anything. Typically, I like to scale out um, the ad. So just the ad, the ad that I did at 22, 26.5, I like to scale it out at break even. So I have a break even trade, okay? I'm gonna try to lift my stop for the ad. So we have zero risk on the ad but I don't have a technical spot right now. We came right into the two minute 10 EMA into 30, 30, like I said, it was the first resistance area. No trades in YM, no trades in ES, no trades in NASDAQ setting up just yet. Day is still super young. Oh, Dell. Oh, my God. That's too funny. See, the S&P here would be, S&P is kind of setting up, okay? Don't laugh at my technical kind of, okay? Technical term. Oh, it's kind of setting up. It's a one to three pullback into the prior weekly high. And if the price is going to get over 41, stop 30, uh, stop under 36. So 35 would be the stop. So it would be 41 by 35. <sighs> Typically don't like it to, to take it. I like to get a little poke in here into the 20 SMA, which I'm not getting. I'm just going to do Russell for now. I'm just keep going to keep an eye on this. Oh, I think, yeah, let's do S&P. S&P 41 by 35. 41 by 35, guys. Long. 41 by 35, S&P. E-S. has not triggered yet. Um, the first target is going to be into the 44, 43. Okay. Okay, I have my order set for 41 and has not triggered yet. And just like yesterday, remember that, uh, wow, heavy divergent market. If you're trading micros, please use at least two or three ticks above my entry level and uh, below my stop level because micros are a little bit more volatile than the full-size contract, okay? So please do that. So give them a little bit of room. 
Uh, no changes in RTY. RTY is just trying to um, balance itself. If it gets a print of 32, it's going to extend to 33, and then it's it's a it's going to be a little bit painful before it goes higher. And that that's Russell. Dennis in what? SMP or Russell? SMP. You can see it above. Do you see? Do you see? Did you do you see what I typed in above? Forty four thirty five. Do you see the? Do you see what I typed in? Okay. Symbol, direction, entry price, times, stop price, then target. Okay, we're in in S and P guys, and Russell is going. We're looking for a first target in S and P. Like I said, in forty three, then we have forty five. I'm curious how Russell is going to react here into the 35 area, but don't be surprised. This is what Russell is doing. Russell likes to clear the stops before it moves in one direction or another. These are the next three targets in ES. We need to see a print of 33.6 and RTY to extend to 34.6. It's right into resistance. It, it has massive resistance. But the good thing about it is that it's developing inside price action on the 15 minute. We still have about 10 minutes to go, but it's looking not bad on the 15 minute. Okay. And by the way, YM is runaway price, no entry in it, don't jump in. NASDAQ stocks are pausing right now. Looking at some of the NASDAQ stocks and um, Microsoft inside um, trading in between uh, yesterday's high low, XLF brand new high, So financials are good. Uh, yeah, Dennis, yes, this is a five minute chart. Dennis, this is a five minute chart. Uh, Boeing extended, extending higher, Walmart and Costco. That's why YM is so fired into this area. All right, come on, price, move higher, higher. Every single tick that we print higher in Russell is going to help the ultimate top of the hour uh, balance. Yeah, Dennis, let me know if you have any questions. Um, about the pattern or anything else. I need to see a pattern, um, a setup 
Steve, I need to see a setup. Right now you have momentum down. Okay, so you have, all right, let me just put this back on the five minute. Okay. Um, put your stops right now at break even and a break even and Russell uh, for the ad, for the ad, 22, 26.5. Put the stop 22, 26.5 for the ad. Okay. All right. Okay, Steve, I'm going to answer your question. This is momentum lower, momentum lower, momentum lower. And right now you're trying to set up for a long here. Okay. So if it triggers over 74, it will go higher, but it has a lot of resistance into the 80. So I'm not going to take this trade just because we're approaching the top of the hour. Yeah, I do take trades in divergent markets. Uh, Dennis, can I explain the ES setup? ES setup is a three bar pullback with the bottoming tail and the trigger above the bottoming tail. It's actually a pullback, three bar pullback close to the 20 SMA into the prior support from pre-market open, double bottom, sustained by the 20 SMA price. Remember yesterday we did a little lecture on moving averages and we're looking for a target into the prior high. This will complete a bull flag formation. And at which point, if we get into the 43, which is our first target, then we bring our stop to break even on the rest, take half out here in my case, and then we get the lift higher for the next few targets. So it's a pullback buy strategy. It's one of the most basic strategies for trading, whether you're trading stocks or futures or um, cryptos, Forex, anything. Yeah, of course. Uh, David, what do you mean by top of the hour balance and why does it matter? Um, the first 30 minutes is actually, um, um, there's, there are a lot of institutional moves that are happening within the first hour, but typically in the first 30 minutes, you have the biggest, uh, the biggest moves in the market. Uh, typically the first 30 minutes decides the directional bias for the day. And typically at 10 o'clock, if you, if we hold the lows that were already set, so from the open, from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, it's most likely that the price will continue higher if we break the 10 a.m. high. And if we break the 10 a.m. low, high odds of pullbacks, okay? So we can become bearish under the 10 a.m. low. So the 10 a.m. high low, I will explain a little bit later on uh, when we get into the top of the hour on about five minutes or so. So I want to draw it on the chart for you so you can uh, understand it better. Uh, do you use different time frames and different setups all the time, every day, every five minutes, every two minutes? I trade, for example, yesterday we were watching for a setup on the five minute in NASDAQ and I took a trade off the one minute. So when I shared the screen, I review the um, video from yesterday because I talked about multi-time frame analysis and I shared my screen and showed you how to do the, uh, the analysis. All right, so we're getting a little poke in here. See, if we get above this 80 area, we can't move a little bit higher, but we're having, again, a lot of divergency here. Remember, my stop right now is at 22, 26.5 at break even, because I don't want to lose on my ad. I don't want to have any risk on my ad. And we came super close. We had a high of 34.3 and I have my average at 22, 35.25. So I was waiting for 35.5 actually to scale out my ad because my ad has helped me to average down. 
And right now I have a risk-free trade at this point. We came to a low of 26.8 and my break even is 22, 26.5. So I'm still in by one tick. And my final stop is 22.20. 22.20, final stop in RTY. We are four minutes into the top of the hour. Don't tell me we're holding by the tick here and Russell. I'll be funny. The reason why I'm not taking NASDAQ is because it's into a lot of resistance here. But other than that, it has a good pattern to act on. Let's check out the 15. See, the 15 minute may be setting up. I'm a little concerned about this flat 200 SMA, which may create a lot of resistance for price. I also have my eyes in the Dow. I would like Dow to come in at least into the 300. So you can see that I have different time frames here. You have to toggle through the time frame that is going to offer you the best entry, the best stop, and the best chances for follow through. Uh, with the uh, with your trades, do you make adjustments or leave your parameters? Sometimes I make adjustments to my trade. Sometimes I make adjustments. You have to be flexible. You're dealing with price action that is constantly fluctuating. You're always going to get a different pattern. You're always going to get different um, areas of support, resistance, and all that stuff. So you have to be very flexible. If you're rigid in trading, it's not going to work for you. You have to play with the price. You have to know how to trade confidently using price action. I love using price action. All right, we're setting up for a sandwich in S&P here. So if S&P is going to poke above 43, so if we see a print of 43, then we're going to go higher. And don't forget that 43 is our target number one. All right, we're literally holding by the tick in the low in RTY. Remember, this is a risk zero trade as of right now. Uh, the ad, I'm not talking about the original trade that was entered at 44, but the second one. All right, we're getting a little bit higher. We have a little tiny doji in YM. Uh, typically what happens at 10 o'clock and we're uh, 30 seconds away from it. Um, <laughs> Odell. No, Lori, Odell, Lori has developed a risk tolerance that is beyond my risk tolerance. <laughs> okay, so I was telling you guys about 10 o'clock, right? The 10 o'clock rule. This is something that we also teach in class, but I'm going to give you a short conversion of that. And um, we are uh, typically, if the market goes up into 10 o'clock, uh, it will pull back from 10 o'clock to about 10, 10, 15 to 10, 20, or even 10, 30, from which point it will rebalance. Okay. All right. So now we have, uh, this is the 10 o'clock. Okay. This is the 10 o'clock. All right. This could potentially be, um, if YM is going to break below this candle low into the 340, it's going to start pulling back at least into the 24. But if it's going to hold, uh, it needs 69. And if it breaks over 69, it's going to go into this prior high and then it's going to extend higher into the 450. 450 is going to be the um, 450 is going to be the target for it. Hey, Oleg, let me take a quick look. Um, your levels are 1776. What time frame are you looking at? Seventeen sixty-five. 
Okay, so here's what I have. I have a bullish above the 1740 area, which had already triggered, but I don't, my sell area is way below here where the stop is 1720. You're looking to sell it down to the 1700. This would be like this area right here, the 1720. This is where I would push the pedal to the metal for the short. And this could take you down to 1700 and to 1675. So into your 1690. But right now, it has triggered above yesterday's high and is still staying above yesterday's high. Still trading above. Hold on. Let me see something. All right. If you want to do it aggressively short, uh, 1738. 1738 for the sell. Your stop becomes 17. I would do 17. Yeah. Seven, see, I would use this 10 EMA for the stop. And your first target is going to be 1730. All I do, follow me. Okay. So I would do it as setting up for a four hour sell. Yeah, four hour sell, four hour sell right now. So if it trades below 38.8 or 38, because you know, gold is so volatile now, you wanna give it a little bit of room because it could snap down and then go back up. Um, this would be, I would do it with half the size. I wouldn't do all, you know, like full size trade. I would use half the size, half the size. Don't risk everything in this trade because remember it did this, and then it went back up, okay? But this would be like a sell here under 38.9. You could do 38.5 or you could do 38 with a little bit more confirmation. And then um, put your stop above 55 or 57. Or if you want to give it a little bit of room, just put it above 60 or 61, just above this 10 EMA. I like to give room to my stops, Okay. Uh, and uh, your first target is going to be then 30. You have target into uh, the 20 area, and then you could go for your 70. So that would be my, my take on this. All right. All right. Let's see if we have something setting up and I can explain the 10 a.m. trade. Okay. One hour, 30 minutes. Let's check these out. All right, this is going to be the danger zone right here. So if uh, NASDAQ is going to start trading below 46, it's going to start pulling back. Okay, so that would be a mark there. The five minute is still holding pretty good. Five minute needs to get out of this 80. Uh, see, the stops are still pretty wide in NASDAQ. NASDAQ was declined this morning uh, and right now it's just ramping up a little bit. I really don't like the fact that, you know, we're getting a little bit of strength here in NASDAQ and that was because it was declined. So whatever goes down from 930 to 10 o'clock at 10 o'clock, it tends to reverse. Uh, we went up in uh, the m and &E SMP uh, and then we pulled back. This, this is kind of sideways, so this could go either or. But in, uh, in YM, we went up into 950, and then we started the pullback process a little bit early on, sideways for Russell right now. Of course, all like, let me know if you have any other questions. Like, you know, as long as I'm in these trades, I have hard stops in, I'm just watching them, babysitting them to see what they're, uh, how they're behaving, I can answer some questions along the way. All right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So I'm going to tell you my theory about, and this is not only mine, but a lot of uh, other traders are using it. Okay. All right, so. Okay. This is the 10 a.m. low. This is the 10 a.m. high. You bracket it. Okay. You bracket it. This is the 10 a.m. low. Okay. This is your 10 o'clock high. This is your 10 a.m. low here in NASDAQ. This is your 10 o'clock high. So basically, you bracket the 30 minute activity from 9 30 to 10 o'clock, and you decide the highest point into 10 a.m. 
and the lowest point into 10 a.m. All right. And here is the 10 a.m. And usually, and this is a strategy that I use in my swing trading, right? This is the 10 a.m. low, this is the 10 a.m. high. All right, so typically I don't change and I don't make any changes to my trades in the first 30 minutes in my swing trades, okay? Um, yeah, Dale, <laughs> okay, we, we just have to wait, you have to be very patient. Okay, so typically what happens is throughout the trading session, if we are going to break above, go from 10 o'clock to 10.30, typically at 10.30, if we break the 10 o'clock high, if we break the 10 o'clock high, we will go higher. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is the confirmation, full throttle, we're moving higher, okay, full throttle. However, if we are going to remain within uh, within the range, right? And typically we wanna see a setup, the core of the range is very important, right? So I'm gonna draw this at the core of the range. So it's basically 50% move from swing low to swing high from the morning, right? You don't have to measure it exactly, just eyeball 50%. Okay, let's see. This one would be a little bit higher into the 36, Never mind. I'm just gonna leave it like this, okay? So you guys understand 10 a.m. low, 10 a.m. high. If we break below the 10 a.m. low, we are going to become uh, bearish, but this is going to be moderately bearish, okay? So this is the 10 o'clock golden rule, okay? This would be the shortcut for it, okay? This is how it, all right, does that make sense? So the 10 o'clock uh, is a super important time for the market super important time for the market. It decides the directional bias for stocks, for uh, futures. Uh, it is a very, it has a very important role into price action, the 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock high low. This is called the 10 o'clock golden rule. It can be applied to stocks. For example, if you're in a swing trade in a stock and when you see the price is going down like this, let's say, okay. Okay, let's do this. So let's say, oh my gosh, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. Oh my God, everybody, everybody's panicking. Let's say you have a waterfall down. Everybody's panicking, especially if you're in a swing trade. So what you do is you wait. What is the first instinct that you guys have when you see all this red? Let's say you're in a trade in NASDAQ, you're in long and you see red, 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 red. You don't have a stop. What do you do? Let's say you don't have a stop. What do you do? You panic and sell. Exactly. That is the first instinct. Okay. That is the first instinct. Okay. That is the first instinct. Institutional traders do not do that. Do not do that. So see, everybody in here in the room has um, not one set. We're going to keep it or we're going to hold it. Okay. No. Typically what happens is that, let me, let me just draw this in a different section here. You guys keep an eye on the price for me, okay? So let's say you have the price, I'm drawing it here. So you have the price coming in, right? You have the price coming in. So everybody, when, when everybody sees red, what do they do? Sell, sell, sell. When you see green, you feel like what? When you see green, 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 what do you wanna do? Jump in, right? You want to jump in. You want to take a little piece of that action. Okay, exactly. Wrong, guys. This is all wrong. All wrong. That's that's one of the things that institutional traders do. When you see red, you have to wait. Okay, you have to wait. And when you see this kind of price action, hold your breath. Okay, hold your breath and then wait for a pivot to form. What does that mean? Wait for a pivot to form. So you're going to be waiting for this. Do you see it? Do you see it? So one, two, three down could be four down. Exactly. It's a cardio move. Ask Lori. <laughs> Ask Lori. So you have to wait for this or you're going to get a little tiny inside action or you're going to get, which is one of my favorites, you're going to get this.
a doji. Okay, a doji. Okay, this is the pivot right here. This is the pivot. This V formation. Okay, see this V formation right here? This is the pivot. Once this candle trades above the prior high, it's a pivot. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not off the screen. Do you guys see it? To the left, to the left, to the left. In YM, where I have YM. See my cursor? Okay, see my cursor? You guys see it? See the drawings? I'm looking at, okay, so I can see what I'm displaying right now. Do you guys see what I'm, do you guys see what I'm drawing here? Okay, perfect. Yeah, so when you have this rotational pattern, this rotational pattern, this is the pivot. Okay, so NASDAQ, Pulling back, let's uh, clear this area right here. So I wanted to do it. And this is a mini lecture for today with the 10 o'clock high-low. Beautiful drawings. <laughs> Thank you, Raphael. <laughs> so I hope it helps because trading is visual, guys. Trading is visual, okay? So, so far the S&P is holding. Let me take a quick look on the 15 here. I don't wanna, no, there's no trade guys. This is chasing, this is chasing in YM. YM is long, and by the way, I love trading YM. Kevin, you can, you can type in with caps or anything and I don't care. <laughs> I just type with caps so you guys, you know, have a little bit of difference. Exactly, Jack, you got it. Trade what you see. All right, let's see now. All right, we're holding the 10 a.m. low so far in Russell, in S&P, in the Dow. Dow is pointing higher again. Yeah, why is my index crushed? Awesome. Dennis, what is my favorite instrument to trade? I really, I, I'm trading the instrument that makes me money. <laughs> the instrument that makes me money. I don't care what I'm trading. You could throw anything out here, but if I see a trading opportunity, <laughs> yeah, if I see a trading opportunity, I'm definitely gonna, um, gonna take it. Okay, so NASDAQ is pulling back. NASDAQ is gonna create some divergency here. Uh, any time frame, Sam, the time frame that you're trading. So for example, Here's a pivot formation. So you have one, two, three down and you have the trigger here. So you have formed a pivot. So you can see that this candle is trading above this high and this high right here, right? So that's a pivot formation. It doesn't matter on which time frame. For example, if you're looking on a 15 minute, you don't have a pivot. The last pivot that you have is all the way here. This is the pivot that you have all the way here. <clears throat> Um, 7.30 to 6.80 for NDX, NASDAQ. Oh, like, I love your thinking. Um, I love higher time frames. I love higher time frames. Um, See, I do have two levels here, 15,973. Um, your levels are 680. Let me just check out the daily. Oh, 680 all the way back down. Okay. If the price is going to get below 700, if the price is gonna go below 700, it's gonna start pulling back big. 
to probably 14,200. So I would not look to buy. I would not look to buy. I have really strict criteria when I buy. So I don't want to buy on weakness. I buy on strength. All right, so we're still holding in um, SMB here. 35 is our stop. We're still holding in Russell. See, every day is different. Uh, Joe, I just mentioned why 10 o'clock is important. The biggest influx of price action in the market is coming from 9.30 to 10 o'clock and they're positioned from, uh, for one direction or another. So uh, 10 o'clock is going to give you the bullish or bearish bias for the day into 10 o'clock, 9.30 to 10 o'clock. And I, I did all the drawings just explaining just that. John, that's a great idea. Yeah, you could do it. And by the way, there are two things that you need to take into consideration, John. So the first chapter is the first 30 minutes, and then you have to consider the first hour. So I consider both. So I consider, for example, the nine, uh, the nine, the 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and then I consider the uh, 9.30 to 10.30, okay? 10.30 is actually the um, prime time trigger time for me. So 10.30 is the time when things are setting up for a trigger based on relative strength or weakness, obviously, but. All right, so. No, when, no. Um, we talked a little bit about yesterday about the impact of 1130. It depends on whether they're selling or accumulating into that. But typically if you have a really hard sell, into the London session, wait for a choppy um, doldrum period. And then uh, the, the New York trading session typically based on, based on the environment is gonna look for a short squeeze. All right, super choppy action in S&P right now. Let's talk a little bit more about the indices and what we see in the price action as we're getting ready to the prime time trigger time. RTY dancing around, it's holding the uh, 10 o'clock low and it's just having a lot of resistance into the 2234 to 2235, just exactly where we have our break even level. We're getting a little bit of a pop-up. We like the strength in YM, we like the strength and hold in ES and uh, Russell, not too bad, but Russell, see these, uh, now this becomes the core of the range. So this is going to be the problem area. We need to see the price well over close. We need one big candle or a series of two to three candles on the five minute that are going to close above 36 to 37. And if we have that, it's going to go back up. All right. And we are 10 minutes away from oil inventory numbers. No trades ahead of oil inventory numbers. Yes, TJ. Uh, swarming bees. If you want to do an ad, if you haven't, haven't done an ad where I've done it aggressively, um, 40 is going to be a little bit too late for it. So I, I would do it over 35, 36. I would wait to see, uh, the close into this one hour or let's say into, we are closer 10 minutes away. Yeah. We're 10 minutes away. This is going to be decisive because we have some inside slow down price action. We have neutral, very neutral price action. We're still tagging this uh, 20, uh, this 200 SMA. If we start trading above 34, we uh, we can start moving higher. But I said the let go is going to be over 36. Uh, right now, that your area 2240 doesn't represent any technical level at this point. So you either have done it where I have done it based on this two minute rotation, where we've where we added at 2226.5 this is where we added because it was uh set up off a of support it was a pivoting um 
it, it had a really good high odds for pivoting into this area. So this is why, why we bought it on this rotation. So it was a buy setup into support. And you can see that we came in into this 34, close to the 34, not really tapping into the 34. So we got 34.3 instead of 34.9 to 34.8. That was the target level. Okay, gotcha. If we're going to have anything set up, I'm going to mention it. Uh, yeah, this, this is the doji, but it's in the context of a sideways price action. Not of much significance, not unless it's pivoting or bottoming or topping. Or it's within the motion, like a sandwich. All right, let's zoom back to the five minute, cut some of that noise out. Remember the ultimate stop is 22.22 and boom, done. Okay, 22.22, we're out. We have a hard stop in ES, we don't play around. Hard stop in ES as well is 44.35. Just a lot of sideways action right now. And the most important thing in trading is that if you see a trade, okay, you take the trade. If you don't see a trade, you don't take a trade. Yeah, we need an algo buy. We need an algo. And actually the volume, I'm a little concerned about the volume. Volume is really down right now. Just volume, just not a lot of participation. 59 contracts traded right now on the one minute. So very low activity and that's in Russell. In SMP, I'm gonna give you an idea of SMP of the dynamics. So if there is no action on the one minute, you have no price action on the rest. So SMP is always a little thinner, but um, um, Russell, I'm sorry. Russell is always a little thinner. S&P 700 contracts right now, which is nothing for, uh, for the S&P, but definitely low, definitely low. The bottom line in, um, in ES is that we need right now, because the price is consolidating, so it's going to be one way or the other. So it's going to be super simple. It's going to be a super simple decision. If we break above these highs right here, which are very close to 43, we will go higher. If we break below off, um, 35, price will go lower. Uh, is it lower due to summer? Um, Well, yes and no. Typically, um, when you had, listen, this is the biggest, it, we already had like a big movement from this swing low to the swing high. And this was, uh, this was the 830 release. And right now the price is getting ready to digest that. Okay. The price is getting ready to digest that. But this is, uh, this is, for instance, uh, you know, a bullish base because it's coming from a swing low to a swing high. And if it breaks above, it's just going to continue higher right here. OK. All right. Um, and the same with RTY's price action. But RTY is not really trading into the highs. And at RTY, we have uh, two levels here. So we have the low and we have the high here. So if we trade over 35 then we have a pretty good chance of getting back into the 44. Uh, and in NASDAQ, because we violated, uh, we violated the 10 a.m. low, but look where we came into. Can anybody tell me what this is? The 200 SMA, right? 200 SMA. So oftentimes, oftentimes you need to look at the charts and say, hey, where's support? Remember, support is a band. It's not the line in the sand. So it violated the 10 a.m. low in the context of just a little bit of a punch down to the 200 SMA. When you have indices that are violating, for example, the 10 a.m., and these are unique cases, 
when they're violating the 10 EMA, if they have alternate support underneath, like a 200 SMA or a minor support or whatever the whatever the time frame or pivot point or whatever it is, okay, it tends to bounce over that area because what it does, it stops everybody out. It does a forced sell and then it rotates, okay, and then it rotates. Um, the fact that Nasdaq is the only index that this basically this is a shakeout, okay, because every base, every base. Uh, and this is very common for lunchtime. During lunchtime, you're going to see a lot of ranges that are developing, especially through the summer. And uh, these ranges are often going to do the shake and bake. Okay, so that means that they're going to whip in one direction or another. They're going to stop out a lot of traders before engaging into the real move. And this is typically what they do. And this is algo. So remember, 85% or 87, I forgot what it was. Um, I think it was 87%. Okay. 87% of the market volume is algorithmic trading. So that's why we have to be as technical as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, do you use uh, do you use the time as point to exit? Never. No, no, Dennis. No, I don't. No. You use time to line up with your setup. Okay. So for example, right now it's 1030. This is prime time trigger time. So typically you want to look for a setup that is developing with the trend within this time frame because that's where institutions are going to be. Okay. That's where institutions want to be. Okay. All right. Um, so by the way, I have trailed out of RT, uh, I've trailed out of RTY, uh, 2226 uh, 0.5, which was my break even. So I still have my original trade in at uh, with a stop at 2220. Okay, uh, MGC Gold uh, hit 50 SMA on the one hour chart. Good time to buy. We talked about it, Joe. We talked about it. Okay. So you're talking about the one hour chart. This is my one hour chart. Okay, GC or MGC, the same thing. I'm gonna put MGC for you. Okay. Um, and you're saying that it hit the 50 SMA on the one hour, good time to buy, or is it 20 SMA to go in? No, you go by the patterns and help by the technicals. You just don't go because, oh my gosh, it just traded on the 20 SMA or the 50. No, you have to have like a, a group effort into that, uh, into that thing. Um, so um, like I said here, the parameters are, and we have, and you have them on the screen. This is the buy right here. This is the buy. 1740 bullish above. This is the buy area. This is the buy area. Multiple time frame confluence with the trigger. This, these are the buy areas. If you can buy it here, put the stop right here. This is going to be your target one in the 50, target 253, target three into the 60. Don't overcomplicate it. Swarming bees. You picked up NEE in this room two weeks back. Uh, who was it that called? Paul, was it you? That called any -E? I forget who called any -E? did I call it I don't know I didn't take it, even if I called it. So I don't know I don't think I called it though. No, who was it Oh my gosh any -E. <laughs> swarming bees wow it's amazing good job on it. Awesome. It just went like vertical on the one hour boom up. Yeah, exactly, Randy. Good advice. You know, just follow the rules and be very, very disciplined. Follow the rules, be very disciplined. Okay, it seems that we're going to get a super slow day. We're closing in on a 15-minute setup in NASDAQ. Joe, are you in our class? Because we teach this in our class. It takes 
10 days for me to explain how we get to the, how we determine these areas. These are confluence areas along with trigger points. See, this is very interesting here because once the price is gonna start trading above 54, it's gonna be 54 by 30. Yeah, 54 by 30. Let's watch these levels 54 by 30. Not calling it yet. Because see, it's reacting off of this 54. Yeah, totally. We're in the, yeah, Dale, everybody's in the Hamptons. <laughs> Except us. <laughs> yeah, Doji Man, totally. I don't know why traders, uh, for example, you know, they first decide, okay, let's start trading first and then let's see if we like it afterwards. And if we like it and if we make money, then we're going to go sign up for a class. Why would you sign up for a class? And trust me, guys, you need to know how to trade. I don't care where you're getting your education. I don't care. You're getting it from us. Fine. But if you're not getting it from us, do not risk one red cent into the market unless you really know what you're doing. And I'm looking at these uh, NASDAQ stocks are getting weaker and they're kind of like getting hammered. So I'm looking through some names here. Keep the hard stops, guys. S&P at 35 and RTY at 2220. Keep those hard stops. Don't play around. Okay, Apple is still holding. Financials are incredibly strong. Bank of America ripping for higher. Amazon trading below yesterday's low and then closing in on the 200 SMA. Uh, the VIX just made a new low today, FYI. So the VIX are not telling us anything yet. Okay. Um, very slow market in NASDAQ and NASDAQ stocks. Laura, yes, the 1030 angels, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Rosemary, the expirations. You mean when the contract expires? Of course. I'll do it for everyone. Okay, so the indices that you guys see here, they're all expiring on a quarterly cycle. So they begin trading. For example, in, uh, in January, they begin the new quarter, right? And they expire in March. They expire in June, they expire in September, and they expire in December. They do not expire worthless like options do. And you have the option to uh, roll. They actually roll over. This is something that you can do on your side. Okay? The broker is not going to do it for you. So you have the option either to close the trade it's really rosemary, it affects mostly swing traders and investors. So if you're investing in YM and if you're approaching the expiration cycle, uh, for example, it happens in the third Friday of the uh, last uh, um, month of the quarter. So it happens, like I said, in March, it happens in uh, September, it happens in uh, December, okay? And of course, in uh, June. So the next expiration that will happen in the market is going to be in September. 
Okay, so in September, you have the option, for example, if you are in a swing trade, you have the option to close the trade for the current month that you're trading because these contracts that you guys see here, these are the September contracts. In September, in the third Friday of September, that is the quadruple witching option expiration where everything expires. So what that means is that you will roll your position into the forward contract, which is going to be the December contract. So there's a quick operation that you do on your platform. You have a rollover button. You can click rollover. And when you click that rollover, what that button does, it closes your contract. It closes your September contract and it opens up your December contract. Okay, that's it. And then, um, the, so this is the expiration, okay? There are two things that you need to know now. Okay, thanks so much, Paul. Thanks so much. Uh, I was just thinking that, you know, these numbers in oil may influence a little bit, may impact, you know, the S&P in one way or another, or the Dow and may start pushing a little bit forward. All right. The other thing is that you have a rollover date. So this rollover date is when the volume starts pouring into the new contract. The rollover date happens a week and before. We also teach this in our class. So the rollover date happens a week and a day before the contract expiration. So if the contract expiration is on a Friday, then count seven days and then your seven days Prior to that, you're going to have the contract roll. What happens into the contract roll, and we talk about this every day in the trading room, what happens into the contract roll is that you're going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of price gyration, um, typically three to four days ahead and three to uh, four days after you're getting a lot of hawkish price action. So it's going to be a little bit tougher. So you know how you need to know how to trade that environment. It's not an easy environment to trade. Not everybody can trade. So if you have been trading around that time and if you have lost money in the market, well, that is because you're not adjusting your style to the style that you need to be incorporating within that, uh, within that, uh, within that time. You need to have clear strategies, more momentum trading into that, uh, into that time. Um, certain times of the day are better than other times of the day within that strategy. So there are a lot of things that go along with these, um, um, that go along with these uh, contract roles. So I hope, uh, Rosemary, I hope that answered your question. And everything that I discuss in here and all of your questions, guys, are, so basically everything that we discuss is in our course. So we teach students how to trade from A to Z. So we, even if a trader has never traded, and I actually love having traders that have never traded a day in their life because they don't come with bad habits, okay? But even if you come with bad habits and even if you have had you know, trading experience, we have traders that have traded for two years unsuccessfully, some that have been trading for five years, for 15 years, for 20 years, and so on. So we had traders from all walks of life or traders that wanted to, improve their trading to take their trading to the next level because basically we teach everything from a to z from what is a contract role what is a contract how to determine and donna your question where you can see the number of contracts that are being traded everything is in our course everything so we have this whole thing that we teach it's called introduction to trading introduction to futures trading well we teach you everything about futures what you need to know about the futures market. So, you know, because it trades a little bit differently than the stock market. So you need to know how to trade it. What is a contract? What's the contract size? For example, when do the um, futures indices expire? When do they roll over? What happens? Um, what happens when they roll over? All these details, uh, this, the size of the contract, uh, which micros are available, 
what is best to trade, whether it's a full size or, uh, you know, the uh, micro size, depending on, let's say, the environment of trading. Um, so all of these things are very important to know when, when you're trading because, um, and especially when you begin trading, because you have a really good foundation. And this is actually in the foundation. We have an intro uh, into our foundation course, which is actually when you sign up, um, you will receive it uh, as an intro right prior to class. So we don't send it that in advance but uh, it's right prior to class. And by the way, we're getting some rotations here. So I'm still watching this 15 minute NASDAQ because we may have a trigger in it. So I'm going to kill some time here talking to you guys while I'm, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's a range. I mean, as interesting as it can get, you know, like I said, the real deal is going to, uh, it's going to be over 43. That's what we need. That's what we need. Yeah, so we also talk about who trades futures. So who are um, our partners in crime, right? So who trades futures? Um, we also talk about, you know, the trading hours um, and all that fun stuff because everything is very important when it comes to trading, right? And, you know, knowing your market participants, so knowing that we're not the only ones. So right here in the trading room, we have so many people, so many traders, and knowing that we're not the only ones that are trading. Retail traders are not the only ones that are trading. We have hedgers, we have um, portfolio managers, we have individual, um, individual, other individual traders. We have hedge funds, we have market makers. Um, proprietary trading firms that are trading as well. And I'm talking about the big proprietary trading firms. And of course, we have algorithms that represent, like I said, 87% of the market volume. So you need to be in sync with them. So the next time when you think like, oh, I'm going to do a quick scalp here, uh, I'm going to take it short, something that is screaming higher, you go like, oh, I'm going to take it short here. Think about it. Would they do this? Would they, would they really you know, kind of engage in this kind of price action activity, okay? Uh, so in our class, after we teach you everything about the futures market, you know, the details about the contract, the contract side, the rollover, the expiration, the trading hours, everything else, then we dive into charting. And we talk about candlestick language. Each candlestick represents uh, uh, and speaks volume. The, each candle represents a dominance. Uh, in the market within the sequence of time. For example, right now we have a five minute, we have a five minute here in the depth. So you can see that this candle that opens at 1030, closes at 1045 is dominated right now by the bullish domain, right? It's, do it's a, a bullish dominated action. So what this means is that if it closes into the highs, right? So it uh, has seconds, it has 40 seconds of life into it. And the more it forces into the highs, the more it will press higher. Okay, the, the more it will press higher. So I'm just going to show you the momentum here. So the high here is 368. Okay, we have 20 seconds to go. So I'm going to wait here for you guys on this candle just to make a point of how you read price action. 10 seconds, five seconds to go, four, three, two, one. All right, the high, we have just closed a high here at 72. If you get a print right now that it's gonna take out that high. So if you get a 73, 74 tick, it's gonna run to 80, okay? It's gonna run to 80. 80 is also a level that we teach in our class is one of those price points where institutions are gonna start either legging in or taking profit. OK, so you can see here it already triggered a little bit. So it's it's probably going to have a transition a little bit higher. So knowing how to read candlesticks, knowing the significance of bottoming tails, knowing the significance of topping tails, knowing the significance of dojis, knowing the significance of all the shapes and forms of this candle. See how it's going higher. So my point exactly is going to give you clarity just because you see the price move up and down. You know, you're going to be like so confused, not knowing where to get in. 
you have to be laser sharp. Um, here it is into the 80s, right? So my point exactly is going to go into the 80s. Now, it all depends on how this candle is going to close. And then because this is a five, five minute sequence, then you uh, are going to look into the 1050, which we have about four minutes to go into it. So it needs the dynamic of that bullish environment to continue. So you need to press more and more and try to gain as much as you can to the upside, okay? Um, so we teach, we teach you how to read candlesticks based on different time frames because not all time frames are different. Uh, oh, because all time frames are different, you need to know what to expect into each time frame. We teach patterns. Patterns are very important. Patterns and ongoing trends, how to read the change in the trend. Nobody teaches you that. Okay. So typically what you like to uh, see in the market and typically what you see in all the trading books is like how to write the trend or how to do a counter trend, but how you read a change in the trend. This is what we teach in class as well. So how do you read a change in the trend? So you know exactly your directional bias because you cannot learn how to read a directional bias unless you know price action and know patterns because patterns are forming uh, your, um, uh, your trends. Okay. Um, another thing that we teach is how to use these tools that we have on our charts moving averages, which is very simple, right? Their role, how to use them to your trading advantage, how to use other um, uh, indicators, for example, like volume. We don't use a lot of indicators, okay? We just use the moving averages and we use, uh, you know, volume and that's pretty much it. Um, we do have two other indicators that we teach in our classes as well, but those are a little bit... Um, sophisticated and I really don't uh, advise traders to use them not unless you know they have been trading for at least three months after the course um, and then we teach you know the market stages because if you would understand the market stages you would not ask for example you know um, can we short it here or can we go long here and you would have confidence in that because you would know when the optimum time to buy or the optimum time to short will be, or when the optimum time to exit will be, or when is it a good time to hold on to a position? This is These are very important things for your trading. Um, market trends, which are very important. Like I said, we already teach how to read, obviously how to read an uptrend, a downtrend, and a sideways market, but how to read a change in the trend because the change in the trend is very important. And not only that, not only how to identify it, but how to treat it actually. Uh, also teach, uh, you know, day trading time frames. I mean, which time frame should you take a trade in? Because they're not all created equal. So for example, in the morning, I'm more focused on the one and the two minute charts. I also get my gauge from the five minute or the 15 minute, et cetera. Okay. Um, so this is very important. And and again, we teach you analytical time frames. Now, how many guys, how many of you guys in here are only day traders? And just type a one in the chat box if you're a day trader and you are analyzing the monthly charts. Okay. So Bash, that's not fair. You took the class. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you need to know exactly. So I see many of you guys are on the right pace here. Okay. Yes. So you need to know the higher directional bias. You need to know uh, how uh, the monthly charts are trading, the parameters from the monthly charts, parameters from the weekly, parameters from the daily, parameters from the four, from the one, from the 30, from the 15, and so on. It's all about rolling out of time frames and rolling back into the time frames. And it, that, that's what trading is all about. And reading price action uh, is going to give you that gauge into what's going to happen in the market next. And then you zoom in on the time frame that you want to trade. And sometimes you're going to get, I, I love it that you guys, you know, so many of you guys answered with one uh, because it's so important. And by the way, Russell really needs to get over that 35.5. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, 
We also teach you synchronicity and divergency because you can see right now, this is a perfect example that we're having divergency in NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is coming in and you can see that NASDAQ is borderline is actually break even on the day. So it needs to take a decision. So that's why I'm watching very carefully for a potential rotation. So I'm watching the area right now of 54. If we trade above 54, it's gonna gain some strength. And if one of the weakest indices is going to start moving in the direction in which the majority of the indices that are not divergent compared to NASDAQ are simply moving higher. So you can see that YM wants to push higher. You see that S&P wants to push higher. Russell is putting a lot of effort and wants to literally pump up a little bit higher. But when you're seeing NASDAQ that is not participating in any way, shape or form, you know, it's kind of like difficult. But if you get a rotation in NASDAQ, if you get a setup forming in NASDAQ, you're going to get algo participation. And the algos are going to trigger even uh, all the indices. You're going to see YM. So, for example, uh, when NASDAQ is going to print a 54, you're going to see instantly YM, S&P, and Russell higher. Okay? Just watch it. If we get it. So, if we get NASDAQ over uh, 15,054, that's it. Okay, so we teach your synchronicity and divergency, what to look for, how to read it, how to pick the index, and uh, how to pick the index that you has higher odds of trading, but not chasing like today, because today you had higher odds of going along YM, but you didn't have any entry. We also teach you advanced technical analysis. Okay, uh, we teach you advanced technical analysis. Uh, which is going to provide you with um, the seven to eight layers of price support resistance that basically you get to trace all of these uh, levels that you guys see here. Uh, we also teach you market reversal time. So this is the market tempo. This is the market rhythm. Okay. So the market rhythm is very important because the market rhythm is going to provide you with information as to when the pattern is likely to form and trigger and start following through. Because oftentimes you're going to see that, okay, we get the trigger, okay, but it was not in sync with the market momentum, with the market rhythm, okay? So you need to have that. We also teach trigger times. There are certain trigger times throughout the trading session. One is at 9.35. We have another one at 9.45. We have another one at 10 o'clock. We have another one at 10.40. So these are very important times because they all have um, a specific characteristic. So for example, if you have the, um, let's say the market tempo in sync with the pattern, in sync with the market dynamic, then you could have, and that is in sync with the trigger time and by the way, 10.30 is one of the most important trigger times of the day. Nothing happened today. You have the exception to the rule. But oftentimes, you're going to see a huge reaction into 10.30. Uh, so these are very important. And then we teach you the anatomy of the trade, how to determine the entry, how to determine the stop, how to determine the target, and how to determine your risk. These are very important factors. You need to know your entry and your stop and your target before you actually dive into a trade. This is not just on paper, guys. You really need to know these things. If you know your entry and you know your stop, you know how to calculate your risk and you know how to position size. If you don't position size, you're going to blow up your account. Not 99.9%, 100%. 100 If you don't know how to position size, you're not going to get to the next level and you're going to refund your account. Uh, trading strategies are very important. We teach 10 trading strategies. We apply different trading strategies depending on the market environment. So for example, if you have, um, for example, yesterday was a perfect example. Well, you have a market that is divergent. Divergent markets are extremely hard to trade. You can see them right here firsthand, okay? So because you have the uh, divergent markets, you need to know what kind of strategies to apply in divergent markets in case you're getting a waterfall or you're getting a pop-up, right? That is, you know, like a massive pop-up or like a massive pullback. Trending markets are easier to trade. Power trending markets have a different car characteristic. They're a little bit more tough to trade because power trending markets are, um, again, um, 
you may not are runaway markets typically, and you may not have an entry into those markets. Uh, we also teach, um, you know, technical patterns and how to uh, how to identify them and how to trade them, and of course, what is a trade without a trailing method. So we teach you trailing methods. So you chunk your money out, uh, and you know how to trail out of the trade, right? Because when you have a, a losing trade, you have a stop. You have an entry, you have a stop, and you know that is your plan. If you get stopped out, then that is part of the plan. You get stopped out, and that is part of your capital protection program. Uh, that sounds funny, but it is. So yeah, you're uh, basically protecting your capital because that is the allocated risk amount that you had for that trade for that day, okay? So uh, the other thing is that you need to, if, in case you have a trade that is working for you, you need to be able to identify areas where you're going to trail. That means to lift your stop up, to raise your stop, for example, if you're in a long position or if you're in a short position, where to uh, zoom in and lower your stop. So it depends whether long or short. Uh, so you need to have a good uh, trailing method. Um, we teach three trailing methods, um, and sometimes we use a combination in between time frames, in between these and difficult markets. We also teach you money management and risk management. This is a very important chapter um, of what we teach in the course. Uh, we also have revamped the trading psychology chapter. Um, we have worked, I actually have done a course on trading psychology because I always, I have a coach on trading psychology and how I need to react, you know, in front of the market and, uh, you know, getting into the right mindset. Mindset is very important for trading. Okay. Having the right mindset. That is you know, in parallel with everything that you're doing, having, you know, having a composed approach to trading. So this is what we teach into the trading psychology. We also uh, have another chapter that we have added. It was part of trading psychology, but we have added a chapter into journaling, a more ample uh, chapter into journaling because uh, journaling is very important. Okay, journaling is really, really very important to trading. If you're not journaling, then at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, you have no idea how your performance was. If you have the statement from your broker, pff, that doesn't tell you anything. You need to have like a really good journal that is going to tell you exactly, draw the line at the end of the month, you're going to do your auto evaluation. And then uh, we're, uh, the best thing that, it's actually from the course is how to put everything together. How to put everything together because everybody's teaching technical analysis or candlesticks or patterns or this or management or whatever. Nobody's actually teaching you how to put everything together. Okay. Nobody's teaching you how to put everything together. And this is uh, where we come in. And the last day of trading is also uh, about tracing these uh, levels that you guys see here on. Uh, on my technical chart, okay, uh, that are a combination of everything that we teach in the course from day one to day five, okay, day one to day five. All right. Um, Um, hey, Donna, the course that I'm offering on this three day. No, this is the, just a, a, just an open house. I'm not teaching you guys anything here. So I am kind of sprinkling some kind of education. This would represent 0.0001% of what I'm teaching in the class, what I'm talking to you guys here. Okay. This is just live trading and live market environment. And we do the uh, we do explain the the confluence levels in the class. Uh, Denise, can you explain the oil inventory? Yes, because somebody mentioned it's down. 
uh, but I believe it is up since those are negative numbers, which I understand means more supply. Denise, you don't care what the numbers are, okay? First of all, any economic, and it's not only about oil, simplify your life to the maximum. You don't care, okay? Literally, you don't care. You don't care what the news is. You don't care what the numbers are. All you have to care about is price action, period, and a pattern. Make it a rule. Do not trade inventory numbers. Do not trade oil before inventory numbers, okay? Uh, wait for at least 15 to 30 minutes after the inventory numbers because that is when the balancing is happening. And then look for a technical pattern. Exactly, price action only. Randy is right. And look for a technical pattern. We had a zigzag here, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Exactly, Rafael, we don't care. We don't care about politics. We don't care about economic results. We don't care about anything. All we care about is patterns and candlesticks. That's it, because it all boils down to patterns and candlesticks. That's it, and how the market interprets it. I do care about tacos as well. <laughs> I do care. We could talk about food, though. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about food. Okay, so uh, for example, in oil, I wouldn't trade oil right now. It has a bullish, moderate bullish above over $69. So unless it trades above $69, it's still going to be in a, uh, in a rut here with the pattern. And um, all right, by the way, guys, my S&P is, uh, is just about approaching. I'm one to go. I'm out right now. I'm out right now in S&P. Stopped out in S&P. <coughs> okay. Um. here the one hour let's check out the four hour here see this is just a pullback one two three a little bit of an escape to the upside and then back down into oil inventory numbers and then you know uh, people are hesitant and holding through inventory numbers especially day traders and algos they look like to go haywire um yeah they like to go haywire okay well, let's check this out. Um, okay, so I'm out of ES, totally out of ES, stopped out. So you have a protective stop. There we go, stopped out of ES. Still alive in Russell, still alive in Russell. We're back to square one in NASDAQ. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't do anything in oil just yet. The pattern is just not conducive of any kind of environment. You need to have like a really clear kind of price action and, and it's doing nothing. Absolutely nothing at this point. It could go up or down or it could, yeah. All right. Do I trade bonds? Yes, absolutely. I trade bonds. We had a killer trade in bonds, killer trade in bonds last week uh we had a swing trade in bonds it hit three of our five targets in bonds um We're not even having a lot of volatility right now. It's just, uh, uh, Josh, no, right now it's just chop. Yeah, no volatility, just chop. Let's dive back into support. Um, S&P is anchoring into the 20 SMA. Uh, 
Oh, hey, Joe. Oh, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the market is really slow, guys. Really slow. The only thing that I see participate higher, like I said, are uh, most of the Dow stocks and financials. Not seeing a lot of other activity. I'm just looking across the board here to see um, my time frames. Yeah, the energy ETF is not doing anything at this point. It's just very much sideways. Uh, so it's sideways just like oil. Hey, Joe, really? I'm super happy. I'm super happy. You see how when you're having, and it's not rocket science, it's about following the technicals on your charts. It's about following the technicals on your charts. That's it. There's no rocket science. You follow the rules, you're going to be great. You're going to do great. All right, we're 20 minutes away from the London session close. We had a really quiet session, really quiet session. So I'm going to do a walk through all the indices. YM is very interesting. So YM brand new high. Um, closing in at that 400 area today had a high of 35,388. We have a low, the prior hour low is into the 314. If we accelerate and hit that 314, we may be coming in into the 250, at which point we become bullish again and we could look for a trade into the PM session from that point on. All right, the MNE SMP, we had one trade, it stopped out, it violated the 35. 35 was also a trigger if from the last hourly rotation to the downside. And it's accelerating right now, it's approaching an area of support at 44.30. Of, we also have another level of support, 44.32, which it came from a 10 EMA on the one hour chart. So let me show you. All right, here it is. So it came very close to this. This is just a one-two pullback here. Not very significant. Not very significant here. All right, let's take a quick look at NASDAQ. Trying to see if we could get some kind of other trade in. For NASDAQ, it would be so hard for me to go short here because it's back into support. You can see it right here. We have a massive support level and we try to hold a little bit above these two levels of support, but this is still massive support here. When you look at it on the one hour chart though, uh, I'm gonna squeeze it in a little bit here so you can see it. We have a high, lower high, and this will this confirms another lower high. I would say today, if it closes below this lower area right here, then it has room to fall. But we need to close below this area. And remember, we talked about this level yesterday as well. Review the video from yesterday. Okay. Yeah, that's a good target, TA. Okay. So if we close weak below these lows right here, but we need to see the close. So you, you know what a close means, right? When the candle closes and then you need to see a setup develop under this support zone, okay? Then this support zone becomes resistance and then we have higher odds for a short. But the short is gonna be sh shortly lived because we have targeted into 960. 
Wow, into 960. So it doesn't have a lot of room to run to the downside. Today it had a good chance. It was actually a perfect textbook rotation that we had. Uh, and that happened really early on. And the price was not able to sustain the 100. We have the, uh, we also have the daily uh, 20 SMA into the 50 area. So remember that 60 and 50 area are areas of support, additional support beyond this 975. So we're probably going to go like support, 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 support. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm not seeing like as of right now, even though we're coming in, I'm not seeing that extreme weakness. Not seeing that extreme weakness. Oh, and I know I've seen, I just remember right now that somebody was asking about Fibonacci's. I will answer that question. I didn't forget. It's just that I'm looking more to see if we have another trade opportunity. All right. So that is with uh, ES tapping. Like I said, ES tapped into the um, 10 EMA. So here would be very interesting to watch for. Hmm. for a five minute, at least five minute rotation, at least. So I'm going to keep the chart on the five minute. NASDAQ, I'm not going to do anything on it. Russell as well. Russell is still into a lot of support. Uh, this is a triple bottom support from, uh, yeah, this is a triple bottom support in Russell right here into this 20s. And it's really trying to rotate. You could see it, you could see it. Okay. All right, so like I said, oil is not gonna go anywhere. Copper is a little bit stronger on the trading day today. Natural gas is sideways. I looked through the um, grains and not nothing to see there as well. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Today is just a very slow, boring day. All right. Um, while I'm looking at these charts... NASDAQ is trying to bounce here. Okay, so to answer the Fibonacci question, okay, to answer the Fibonacci question, um, when you trade Fibonacci before you even think about tracing Fibonacci's, okay, uh, you need to have a really good understanding of what patterns, pivots, trends. You need to know these first before you even dive into Fibonacci. Because in Fibonacci, you need to have a really good gauge of the trend. Because if you don't know what the trend is, those Fibonacci's are not going to help you in any way. They're actually going to um, do you a big, big disservice because you're, you're not going to pinpoint them accurately. Fibonacci's are also, you have to have a really good technical reason in order to um, trace them. You have to have a pivot formation into a high or into a low before you start tracing it. Because if you have ongoing price, you cannot trace it. You need to have a pivot high. So for example, in an uptrend, you need to have a good reason to trace it. Uh, if you don't have a reason to trace it, then you cannot trace any kind of FIB. Uh, I only use Fibonacci's on daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts. I use Fibonacci extensions. I use Fibonacci projections. They're actually from the same tool. And um, when you trace uh, Fibonacci's, like, uh, let me share the screen. All right. 
So you have to have, this is actually the last thing that you need to learn how to apply Fibonacci's. I mean, if you're just at the beginning of your trading career, you shouldn't even worry about Fibonacci's at this point, okay? You need to be a little bit more advanced to, to actually um, apply Fibonacci's. Okay, can you guys see the screen? Okay, cool. All right. I'm keeping an eye on my other charts. By the way, by the way, by the way, my 2220 got stopped out. So I'm out of RTY. So RTY stopped out. Okay. Um, okay. What platform I'm using? I'm using Thinkorswim platform by TD Ameritrade. have been trading on it for years and years and years and years. Okay. There are a lot of trading platforms that you can use. I like uh, TD Ameritrade has been around for um, many, many years. It is a reliable platform. And I also have easy access to my profits and my money. So if I wanna take my money out, I have a Visa card, I can pull my money out. It's not that I have to you know, call in or send a form and say, oh, can I have my money back please? No. So it's easy access to your cash. Okay, so before you draw Fibonacci's rule number one, identify the trend. Okay, yes. So identify the trend. So what trend is this? Higher highs and we have higher lows. And by the way, Schwab is a really, really good broker. Yeah, Schwab is really good. I call him Schwabby. Okay. Of course, William, feel guys, feel free to ask me anything. Okay. Okay, so trend is higher, right? So when we want to determine, so we want, we use Fibonacci's for two reasons, right? The reason number one is we want to know in case of a pullback, where it's going to go and where's the next area from which it can bounce. Okay. The other thing, the other, uh, the other use for the Fibonacci for the same, let's say retracement tool for the same tool for the Fibonacci retracement tool is to calculate projections. Okay. So you cal calculate them differently. So I'm going to show you today how to do Fibonacci retracements, okay? Uh, Larry, DOS is not available in Canada. Yes, I'm aware of that. I know they're not available in Canada. However, you have a plethora of other opportunities in Canada uh, you can use, uh, that you can use. Um, Ninja Trader is available to you, Trade Station. So there, there are many, many other um, um many other uh, brokers, okay? All right, so when you wanna determine the uh, rotation, when you want to determine the pullback areas and areas that may represent institutional buying again, okay? Hey, thanks, Brian, GFF brokers. Okay, awesome, thanks so much for the input, guys. All right, you cannot trace anything. The reason for it is trading into the high. Right, so you have to have a technical reason in order to, do you have any kind of proof that the market is gonna come in? No, if the market would have, uh, this is the only time when you can, uh, let me draw it here. If you would have a candle, see this candle right here? If you would have a candle that it forms the pivot, then you could just start tracing the Fibonacci's. At this point, there's no Fibonacci that can be traced here. Okay, no retracement, absolutely no retracement because you have the price that is ongoing. You can see it here. You don't have a red. When you have any kind of pivot formation, then you could, uh, you could draw any kind of, um, let's say extension that you want. We're gonna go one by one so I can show you. Okay, so for example, let's go here to ES. Okay, so here are NES. Do you have any technical reason to draw any kind of Fibonacci? No. So you need to have either a sell setup or a breakdown or any kind of confirmation that the price is coming in. You see what I mean? So it's a little bit more advanced. So a lot of traders, right at the beginning of their state, at the beginning of their career, they go like, oh my gosh, I want to learn Fibonacci. So like Fibonacci is going to, if you know Fibonacci means nothing, you need to know other things like trends, buy setup. What is a buy setup? What is the risk? Others, before Fibonacci. Fibonacci comes in time, three to six months, eight months after you took the course, okay? All right, 
So you don't have any technical reasons, so I cannot show you anything at this point. Let's see if we have anything else here, like NASDAQ. Okay, in NASDAQ, we do have a turnaround cone, right? You see that we have a cone. So here we can, uh, we can have a Fibonacci, right? So typically in Fibonacci, you want to go from the recent swing low to the recent swing high. And that is going to give you an area where the pullback may retrace and start moving and start moving higher. So from this point on, you want to take out your retracement tool. Here it is. And you want to pinpoint the lowest point from the pivot. And I'm going to go starting from here because this is the lowest point in the pivot within the trend. And you want to connect it to the high. Okay, but the reason why I traced it is because I had a one, two, three, four, five up, and then I had a turnaround. And as soon as I had this cell formation, okay, when I have the cell formation, you could actually start tracing it. If you would have had the price action like this, no Fibonacci's on the menu, okay? Nothing on the menu. And then when you have this candle, this is where you start tracing it. And this is going to give you an idea of an, alt of an alternate support level from which the price can bounce. And if you do not see it really uh, enough here on the daily, you could start extending it to the one hour or you can start going to the four hour. OK, so you can see the levels and you can make notations off of these levels. And you can see that right now the price is trading into a 50 percent. 50 percent is not a Fibonacci number. 50 percent is the measuring move from the prior swing low to the prior swing high. OK, so the way you can use these Fibonacci's is that they offer you an alternate. Uh, uh, they offer you an alternate uh, opportunity. Hold on, because there may be a trade. OK, guys. The uh, YM, YM into the close. Let's see here. Um, I'm gonna wait oh, just one more minute. We may get some setups here. We may have a short squeeze in that stack. Barry, don't worry about it. They're not going to go anywhere. Guys, don't put effort into something that is not worth. It's not worth it. Both companies are phenomenal companies. It's a takeover. It's nothing. Okay, it's a takeover, it's nothing. Okay, so until that is setting up right here, I'm gonna wrap up this discussion. So when you do, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't, I am not worried about it, okay? Um, so when you discuss about, when you discuss Fibonacci's, they have to be in the context of all other technical. So it's not only that you're gonna be using Fibonacci's, Fibonacci's are going to help you for example, if you have a pullback into the 61.8%, which is the golden means, this would be more prone to a rotation at this point. But you need to know patterns. Patterns, like if you know Fibonacci's without patterns, it's zero because you need to have like a technical uh, reason for you to buy that 61.8%. It's not that the price is going to go to 61.8% and say, oh, it's a Fibonacci. I'm going to buy it right here. No, it's not. You need to have a really good solid reason uh, to buy it into that area. And it depends on the environment. It depends on, uh, depends on many, many reasons. All right. So I showed you that. And right now we're going to dive into trading. I typically don't do this in the trading room. So we just trade. But since it's an open house, um, I wanted to show you a lot, a lot of other things. Uh, five more minutes into the London session close. I, we don't know yet if this is going to be some profit taking into the London session close or if this is going to be the start of the rotational pattern. Let's just wait. And by the way, guys, when we trade in the morning, no breaks. 
If you are going and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. It's not going to work. You may miss the trade. Do you see me getting up from the computer? No, I'm on the mic. Okay, so from nine o'clock to whenever we're wrapped up at 11 or 11, no excuses. If you want to do day trading, this is what day trading is. And it starts with discipline. There's no like, I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. Oh, I'm going to read the newspaper. I'm going to check my phone. I'm going to check my browser. Oh, let's see what's happening on Facebook. No, it's charts 100%. So you need to be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, then trading is not for you. <laughs> day trading is not for you. Use the pens. <laughs> only a lunch break that we're done i mean basically around 11 30 you know we're kind of done we're kind of done adult diapers steve you got it seriously guys see educate yourself what if a trade happens and that is the trade of the day what if a trade and guys, you only have to do this for two hours. It's not like you're commuting to work for an hour. Then you stay there for about nine hours. So that's 10 hours and then 11 hours to get back home. It's just two hours. <laughs> it's just two hours. environment. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. That's too funny. Okay. So now we're watching these charts. I'm going to give you my bias, but not yet for the rest of the day. Um, I'm, I'm telling you the market, I, I see the market a little bit higher is just uh wishy-washy here. It's not going in any, uh, in any direction today. I like the way YM, so YM is going to be a prime watch because YM has massive strength compared to NASDAQ, for example, right? So we have, let's put this on the five minute. Okay, we have this five minute here. We have a nice support into the 315. And see what uh, Russell is doing back and forth. We may be back in Russell tomorrow. Let's just uh, wait. Uh, or I am going to communicate it with you on our private feed if we have anything in the afternoon. We do have four members only, a private feed that if we have special announcements or if there's a trade that you cannot stand a thought of not taking it, <laughs> uh, then you, uh, Donna, that's too funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. And price action, Rosemary, price action, pattern, pivot, trend, and price action. So it's PPPT. <laughs> oh, Lori, are you still in? I wish I was still in. I took it off. <laughs> I took it off, but I, but I wish I would stay, I would have stayed in, honestly. <laughs> Okay, I, and I'm gonna give you, uh, and I'm gonna give you like, uh, you know, my advice to trading, if you will. Uh, if you want to be in this business for a long time, always under position size. You're going to, if you feel the heat, you are in the trade with too much size. You have to be undersized, undersized. You're going to feel so comfortable being undersized. Start using half the size. If you're just starting out trading, use half the size to build up confidence. That's the only thing that is going to build confidence. Yeah, half the size. You're going to be so relaxed. By the way, I'm using 1% for my trades. 1%. 1%. 1%. Typically, you know, a trader that has my experience would use three to 5%. I'm still using 1%. I'm still using 1%. That's because I'm talking, I'm explaining, and I could not be relaxed in a trade if I would be in with 3% or 5%. <laughs> 
Negative yardage, teach me how to do that. I want to get rich quick too. <laughs> we should start following Wall Street bets then. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. You refuse to go red. I know. I, and by the way, this is a really good uh, candle here on the 15. And I think it's a good one on the five too. No, the five is not that great, but the 15 is good. The 15 over 26, five right here. I don't, um, yeah. NASDAQ is really close to this 15 minutes. So I have it on my other screen. I told you NASDAQ is going to go back and forth, back and forth. Of course, Oleg, anytime, just let me know, uh, guys, if you have questions and if I can answer them for you, that's, that's great. That's the whole purpose of the open house and inside into what other traders are doing. And of course, this is my method. You could, you could adopt, you know, like your own separate method. <laughs> okay. Everybody trades, uh, you know, kind of like differently. The bottom line is like, show me the money. Okay. How does that method work for that trader and if it's easy to adapt on your own and my system is easy to adapt on your own because i'm teaching you all the rules of the game all you have to do is apply them and i give you the trading plan as well like who does that most of the educators out there are going to say hey you know what trading is so personal you have to develop your own trading style your own trail trading technique Seriously? Like if I have something that is working for me, why wouldn't I share that? Right? There's enough money in the market for everybody to get in on the same setups. NASDAQ is a short squeeze, guys. Over 100. Stop 80, over 100, stop 80, NASDAQ long. Target is 10 and 15. Don't expect it to come very fast. Here it is, we have the trigger. Don't expect it to come super fast because we're outside of the regular um, trading hour. Oops, sorry guys. Yeah, of course you got it. It's, it's 15,000, not 100, sorry. It's 15,000, it's trading at 997. Okay, not 100. Not, not 100. Sorry about that. So it's 15,000. If you didn't get in, it's trading at 95 right now. So the trigger is 15,000. There it is, it's going again. Here it is, trigger guys, we're in. 80's the stop, 80's the stop. 980, 980, 980. 980's the stop. We're gonna apply a really tight stop on this one. 
just about here. And I'm actually doing it on a smaller time frame. So see how it's been holding here, these 80s? I don't want it to go below 80 because if it's going below 80, it's going to go to 70. So I'm giving the real stop is 963. Okay. The real stop is 963. And now we are not having a lot of velocity into the market because we're approaching 12 o'clock. Yeah, no volume. You got it, Jack. That's why we're going for a small target. We're going for 10 and 15. We're actually going to tighten the stop. In about three minutes. Okay, so what I'm eyeing here is 85 for a trail stop, but not now, guys. We need to see a print of 15005. 15, Come on, top it out. Gonna zoom it in for you. Watching price action. We need to get over that red line. Once we get over that red line, we may go higher. <clears throat> 10 and 20, 10, yeah. 10, 15, maybe 20, maybe. SMP is getting quite interesting here. Yeah, we do have a system buried that we teach in the class uh, that is specific for uh, Asian session and London session. Yes, any index, any index, gold, gold oil, anything. Anything. Yes, you can trade it. But there are different time frames that you need to adapt to. And there's a different style. And I saw your question about top step. L sure, let me know what question you have. We do provide, so once you become a member um, of the trading room or a student in the trading room, uh, we do provide you with guidance of how and what risk you need to apply. So we're helping you out with that. We do have traders that have prop accounts here in the, in the trading room. And I do recommend position sizing so you know exactly how much to risk on every single trade. And you have access to, um, to a document, we call it the um, portfolio performance document. And um, Asia London timeframes such as lunch hours and such yes yes so we do have a system that teaches you how to trade the asian session london session it's all about pattern and how to adapt the time frame for that there are different time frames that you apply for different sessions and different times within the sessions so you not have to know exactly how to correlate the pattern with that and uh, you'll know exactly what to do So gold had a nice run. Gold had a nice run. From the bullish above line, right into uh, 50 resistance. See, between 50 and 53, we still have another resistance point here into um, 51, right where it's trading right now.
Okay, Don is asking if any uh, any of you guys are using a prop account. How do you like it? Uh, Don, I'm going to tell you how they like it. If they respect the rules, they're making uh, they're making money and advancing. And if they're uh, they're not respecting the rules, they're not liking it. <laughs> so that's that. You respect the rules. And the one thing that I like about using a prop account, especially when you're at the beginner stage of your trading, is that uh it forces you to get in and out within a certain day it teaches you to stay away because they're not allowing you to trade through uh economic releases okay so it they are enforcing rules and that's really good because that's that's what you do that's what you do the moment that you step outside of the rules that you're not going to uh do good Uh, Ken, are you in my trading room? If you're not in my trading room and if we sign up with that link, uh, send me, yeah, <laughs> Don, I mean, it's simple, really. Um, um, okay, send me an email and uh, tell me the account size that you signed up with and I can help you out with the position sizing so you get a good head start on that. Yes, they do. You can paper trade it first. Yes, and you have to start making money. And don't be greedy. Randy's here in the room every day reminding us not to get greedy. Ken, that's the best one. That's the best one. In fact, I, I will tell you right now what it is. So you don't need to email me, don't, okay. So um, if you opted for $150,000, uh, don't take more than three trades a day. And your risk per day should be $750 per trade. Don't risk more than $750 per trade and position size, position size, position size. Okay, position size. So position sizing is the difference between the entry and the stop. And based on that risk, you see how many contracts you can fit into $750. So for example, if you're in ES, okay, let's hypothetically, okay, by the way, NASDAQ just stopped at 80. Okay, NASDAQ stopped at 80. Um, oh, Krista, I agree, I agree. I agree. Okay, so for example, uh, returning to your question, um, you know, uh, and basically to what I was saying to the $750. So for example, for example, if you have a trade in, I don't know, let's say in um, uh, S&P, for example, okay, because we talked about S&P and we have, were in a trade in S&P today. So for example, you have a trade in S&P, and let's say you have a seven point stop, okay? Seven point stop. That is $350. Your allocated risk amount is $750 a day, okay? So if you have a trade, for example, an S&P with a seven point stop, you could take it only with two contracts, okay? So that's, that's how you position size. You need to see how many contracts you can fit in that $750, okay? Uh, for example, if you have, I don't know, uh, let's say Russell, if you trade Russell and you have a four point stop in Russell and that's $200, okay? That's $200. 
Um, you can only take it with three contracts. That would be $600. Always go under and not over. Okay, don't do the 800. You can do 800. It's totally up to you. It's not a big thing. But I always, I tend to go under my size a little bit. Okay. Uh, so for example, if you have NASDAQ, um, I don't know, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have a, a 10 point stop in NASDAQ. Okay, 10 point stop in NASDAQ, that is $200, right? Um, then you take the trade with three contracts, okay? Or four contracts, you could round it up to four contracts, the same thing as with the prior example. So know how to position size. This is what, this is how you're gonna grow your account, okay? This is how you're gonna grow your account by position sizing properly, okay? All right, guys, uh, any other questions? We're wrapping up for the day. Um, let's go back here and determine the PM session uh, to see what kind of trades and if there is a trading environment for the PM session and what we need to look for in the PM session. Okay, so this is, I'm going back a little bit further to, um, okay, let's see, okay. So I'm going to the one hour chart. So let's see what we have going on. So YM definitely one of the strongest indices is up almost half a percent, 154 points to the upside. However, it's into a pullback phase right now. You can see that we had an inside doji and we have just taken out the prior low from the doji from the prior hour. And then we have a like 10 more minutes in the life of this candle. Uh, it all depends on how we close here, because within the next hour going into one o'clock, if we start trading above 350 to 360 again, then we are going to land on the bullish side again. But I'm expecting a pullback at least into the 250 to 200 area. These would be the two areas that will provide us with a really good technical reason to go, to go in, Okay. Uh, at this point, the one hour is very extended from any kind of support level, so I would just leave it for now. The only way I would look at this is to see if we get any kind of pattern for the afternoon trading session into the 15 minute, because the 15 minute had pulled back already into the 10 exponential moving average. And at this point into the top of the hour, if we trade above this high, which is four, 345, then we will start moving a little bit higher and things will start moving again. We're having kind of like a distribution date that I'm seeing today following the news uh, from which the price action reacted. So I think patience is going to be key. But these are the two things that I would watch. Number one, I would look for a pullback in the 250 and then I would look for a buy and I would look for a 30 of uh, 35, 200 area and I'll look for a technical buy. I will also look on the 15 minute, like I showed you the uh, prior uh, chart for a buy setup if we have anything into that area. For the mini SMP, mini SMP is very tempting for me because it's uh, back into the bullish above uh, level here. So uh, any kind of reaction off of this area, this remember this was a trigger before the market uh, started to push uh, after the numbers came out, the CPI numbers came out. So it started to push higher after the numbers. Uh, so this would be, again, uh, a revisit of the prior trigger price, any kind of formation that will uh, probably be forming around this area. Plus, we have so many support areas right here, all the way into the 23 and into the 20. All of these will be seen as uh, uh, potentially uh, buying opportunities on any kind of setup. So no trade without a setup here. So I'm going to dive into the 15 minute. 
the 15 minute just came in. You can see that the price is trading below the moving averages right now. It's also trading. So it's trading below the 10, uh, below the 10 and below the 20, but it's trading above the 50 and below, above the 200. And it also has this medium bullish above line right here. So what I would like to do is to watch and see if there is any kind of consolidation with a poke above this 34 to 35 area. That will bring a lot more interest to the buy side and you will ha probably have a lot of algorithmic participation as well. I'm seeing a lot of relative weakness in NASDAQ, like we have discussed before. If we get a close below this 70, then I think that we could look for um, some kind of um, pattern that we can may be conducive for the downside. It's one of the weakest indices that we have right here in terms of uh, pattern. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, as well, a very weak index that uh, Again, it's very close to 1% to the downside, 20% down. And you could see here that it violated this support. And then again, here, this becomes another support level from which the price can bounce. So any kind of pullback, uh, any kind of, and, and it's really hard because you're having this massive divergent market. This is the kind of market that I hate trading. And typically I kind of step away when I see this kind of nonsense into the market. I like to trade markets that are in sync. I, I do trade markets that are, for, uh, for example, divergent, but um, you know, I, I take, I try to focus on smaller timeframes and take quick trades into it. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so let's see what else do we have. Okay, uh, yeah, I was looking at some of the stocks. I see NVIDIA coming in. I see Microsoft still holding. I'm seeing um, social media stocks, you know, uh, for example, Twitter coming in, violating a big support level. I'm seeing Amazon coming in, but still, uh, you know, it still has a lot of support into the 80s, 30 to 80s. So looking a little bit around, we have a lot of divergency in the market, a lot of, a lot of weird stuff happening. And it's not often that I, say the word weird, but it a lot of weird stuff happening in the market with all the strength that we have, for example, into uh, financials right now. Okay, uh, that is really bizarre. So NASDAQ coming in, there's definitely some sector rotation happening right now. Um, when I'm, uh, when we're done with the room, we will take a look, I will take a look at uh, some sectors. Uh, but again, here in NASDAQ, if we start trading below, and stay below here, we may have a quick chance, uh, quick chance to move, uh, to move lower. Yeah, very odd day today. We're having a lot of relative strength over uh, half a percent up in, uh, in the Dow and close to 1% down in Russell. And we're having NASDAQ that is coming in. So a lot of things that are a lot of things that are divergent and a lot of things that are weird in the market today. So very, very weird things in the market today. So I'm going to uh, give you a quick heads up of uh, what I'm seeing right now in the market. Um, so again, big down day for NVIDIA, for Pfizer, uh, for AMAT, semiconductors are having quite a bad day. Uh, AMAT is the most decline with LRCX and CLAC, uh, NVIDIA, Micron uh, as well. Uh, so semiconductors are a little weak. If you look at SMH, SMH is rather weak. Um, we have the techs that are kind of like holding, like they're not incredibly weak right now. So we still have Apple in the positive, Microsoft in the positive. Oracle, Adobe in the positive, Intel in the positive, AMD, uh, Xilinx into positive. Um, so we still have financial sectors aside from Visa and MasterCard and a little bit of PayPal. So these are credit services. Credit services are in the neutral towards a little bit bearish. We do have banks that are super, super in the great. So we have uh, JP Morgan over 1.2% up. We have Bank of America 1.5% up. We have City Wells Fargo, BRKB, 
we have a lot of things that are super strong regional banks that are incredibly strong as well we have uh, capital markets we have schwab we have goldman sachs we have morgan stanley that are incredibly strong so most of the financials that i'm looking at are incredibly incredibly strong incredibly strong i'm also seeing railroads that are incredibly strong today and um I'm just looking through some of the, some of the trades that I have, um, and one of them is CSX that is going ballistic, finally breaking out and uh, triggering that monthly rotation. So these are super strong. Um, utilities are strong. So again, from railroads, uh, UNP, CSX are very strong. We have util utilities uh, like NEE. Somebody was mentioning in here NEE. Uh, is very strong. Uh, Home Depot is strong today, also part of the Dow stocks. Um, okay, let's see. All right. Um, I'm seeing restaurants that are into the green, not massively green, but I'm seeing like uh, McDonald's, Starbucks, a little bit green. I'm also seeing uh, some retailers that are a little bit on the green side. I'm seeing home builders a little bit on the green side, like Lennar, DHI. Yeah, just very few retailers. Uh, entertainment, Disney is barely up it's kind of holding comcast a little bit higher netflix is underwater verizon a little bit higher um healthcare let's take a quick look at healthcare because i mentioned earlier that pfizer is underwater today um but we have guild and cvs that are pushing higher we have johnson and johnson which is neutral merck that it's kind of neutral uh unh which is neutral right now so yeah, this is kind of like a, you know, an idea of how the market uh, is reacting. Um, also from NASDAQ, because NASDAQ is the one that is really under pressure here. We have Myrna. I would short any opportunity in Myrna. I mean, there's no reason for it to be into the $500 range. Literally, no reason. So Myrna and Pfizer for me were like on the books. I really didn't want to short these. Uh, and I, I don't want to trade these at all. I'm not a big fan of these pharmaceutical stocks and healthcare stocks. I would trade a CVS. I would trade something like that. But I, I don't like to trade these. Um, and like I said, this is the leader to the downside. Myrna is the leader to the downside. And I think it's going to start coming in. Um, it's collapsing right now. It's collapsing right now. Um, Amazon uh, is also, um, see Amazon for me, I'm going to put it here. Uh, so you understand the context of something that I'm looking at. So for me, Amazon is not weak. Okay. For me, Amazon is not weak. It's just, uh, you know, just a big massive range onto the monthly. Uh, we have uh, Zoom that is coming in right and zoom may be a sell uh zoom may be a sell it still has a lot of support into the 344 but if it breaks 344 down it goes to 307 so zoom is weak uh let's see what else we have here yeah we have a uh, doku docu that is very weak as well <sighs> let's see um We have AMAT that is weak. Like I said, Netflix is weak. I've mentioned Netflix earlier. Very divergent market. Here's Netflix is weak, but it's still trading into support. So this is still a pickup, uh, pickup kind of area. If the price is going to turn around, uh, let's see. And on the other hand, we have um, some strong stocks. Okay, so like I said, the strong stocks are into the Dow. So these are Dow stocks, Home Depot, right? So I do look for these um, opportunities. Uh, 
All right, so Home Depot, I'm gonna to get to a weekly chart here rather. Yeah, take a look, triggering higher. So Home Depot is super strong. Here's one, Caterpillar is very strong. Caterpillar, Caterpillar just triggered on the weekly. And um, here, oh, wow, this setup is really great. Over 220, over 220, this Caterpillar is a long, it's gonna be a swing and it's gonna be a long-term swing with targets into the 240 and 245. Caterpillar looks really good here. Okay, um, we have uh, also, like I said, we have financials that are incredibly strong, right? Incredibly strong. Uh, this is a daily chart of Goldman Sachs. You could see like four days really get extended from minor support. Goldman Sachs higher. Uh, Bank of America, again, super strong. Personally, I'm an XLF. Okay, I've been stocking this for quite some time. I've been stocking this since it was, you know, trading into this area, you know, in July and then mid July here. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get in over 37.20. This was my entry. Uh, and then the, the price came in and I'm like, yeah, no, this is a shakeout. And then I waited again. And then I got my entry into the seven, uh, 3720. So you see that you need to have a lot of patience to wait for these, uh, to wait for these patterns to form. All right. So really nice, uh, going, uh, going higher. Okay. Um, and then we have, yeah, we do have, for example, and this is the last one, Walmart, uh, Walmart, which is, uh, and again, you know, these are the type of stuff like Amazon, Walmart, Costco, you know, these are the type of stocks that um, are really great to hold. Another stock that I'm in is um, AA, Alcoa. Remember when Alcoa was uh, the one stock that uh, opened up earnings season? It was so cool. I got used to it. And now you have financials, right? Laura, remember it was Alcoa. It was the first stock that was reporting earnings like for years and years and years. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then what else we have? Oh, let's go back to CL here. I wanted to wait a little bit into the top of the hour because like I said, I'm not seeing a lot of weakness out there. We're into some hefty support levels. So I showed you the good, the bad, and the ugly within the market indices, what's happening under the hood, all right? So like I said, oil, not gonna touch it, not gonna do anything. Look how gold went into this pivot line right here. So very nice. Um, NASDAQ is trying to rotate on the one hour. It's not shocking. The 15 minute has already triggered. Hmm. 15 zero, uh, 15,014 and a half. So it's four of uh, 50. So 14 and a half here over 14 and a half would be the trigger, but it's landing right into these uh, moving averages and I'm not loving it. Let's see this one, which had relative strength. Yeah, this is going to be a trade here. Uh, it's going to be 335, 335 long YM and the stop is gonna be under 300, 35 by 300 YM. YM long. And you're going to have targets into 50, 60, 70, and 80. All right. 50. Oh, sorry. Typo. 50. I'm not even looking when I'm typing. That's why, because I'm looking at price action and 80. Okay. These are the targets. All right. All right, guys, 
Uh, this is the last trade uh, for the management. As soon as you get into the target one, raise your stop to break even. So you have a risk free on your trade or you can even, uh, yeah, raise the stop to break even and do like this as the trade unfolds to the upside. I will see you guys tomorrow in the trading room. Thank you so much for, um, uh, thank you so much for participating in today's open house. We also have um, really great feedback and I do appreciate the feedback from you guys. Uh, hope you had a good experience today and hope you had a great session. You can see that you can make money, you can lose money. All that matters is when you're in a trade, position size, keep your losses small, respect your stops, and then go back at it again. As soon as you see the pattern, go back in the trade, okay? Go back in the trade. Never chicken out, guys. Okay, this is what trading is all about. Thanks so much. So don't forget YM, when it achieves target one, reduce your stop to break even and then let it go. And it can go above 80, guys. By the way, it could go back into the 400 and it can have a huge extension. Wow, to 600, to 600. So if you're gonna see the price trading over 60, that's gonna do a one hour rotation if it's gonna happen in the after afternoon trading session. So if you see it over this high, okay, if you see it over this high, over 60, <laughs> Jack, I love the emojis. Okay, if you see it over 60, it's going to start flying. Uh, it's going to try to go into the all-time high, 400, 450, uh, 500, 550, all the way. Look at this next resistance area right here. Okay, thanks everyone. I will see you tomorrow. Same place, same time. Please use the same login. I will see you guys tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed today's session. Back at it tomorrow. This is a wrap.